Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick video. Um, I know I haven't been on for a while. I'm going to cry during this, just so you know. But um, it's been because, if you don't know, my sister was pregnant. Um, she was due on the 25th. No, 29th. Due on the 29th of this month, May 29th. Um, and on Friday, which was the 17th. Oops, that's something I wanted to touch. The 18th. Um, on the 18th, I had just gotten home from school. I was texting her at like 2.15. And I was like, hey, what's up? You know, just talking to her. And then she never responded. And I was like, really? Thanks, Joy. But, um, I was like getting really upset and I was like, I'm gonna call her at like five o'clock because I was busy. But anyhow, I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna call her at like five o'clock and be like, Why didn't you answer me? So I was really PO'd. So at like three o'clock, like I had been home from school for like twenty minutes. Um, I had a call from my mom. My mom is like frantic and I was like, What are you what's wrong? Like, what's going on? And she's like your sister is going to the hospital, but, I mean, she ha she's been having a really difficult pregnancy. I mean, um, she has that problem with, like, the really high blood pressure, and, like, a week ago, she was in the hospital because she was having problems, and they were like, oh, we're going to induce you. No, we're not going to induce you. We're going to send you home. So, yeah, in the long haul, they ended up sending her home or whatever, but, um, yeah, she went in Friday, and they were like, no, we're going to keep you, and we're going to start Pictosin. So, she started on Pictosin, I like, I think it was like, but they let her go for a while, and I think they started the Pictosin at like 7 at night, but um, I had, like, frantically, um, I think it was like 4 on the dot, um, I had left to go to the hospital, which is a half hour away from us. The one that she was at. I mean, we have one like 10 minutes from my house, but my sister lives like an hour away from me. So, anyhow, she was at that hospital. So, I was like, all right, I'll go, you know. And my mom was like, hey, you know, you might want to bring some stuff. It's going to be a while. Camp out in the waiting room. So, I was like, all right. So, we get there, and I mean, it was all right. I mean, it's Geisinger in Danville, Pennsylvania, is where she was. She's not there anymore. But, um, anyhow. I mean, it was, it was pretty alright. Um, it, it was near the Janet Weiss, um, children's wing. In case you've ever been there, that's right where the maternity ward's near. It's in, like, the women's center, I think. Anyhow. But, um. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, well, you'll find out. Anyhow. So. Like, I brought a pillow and just, like, some shorts to change into and whatnot, and I was like, alright, phone charger, laptop, let's go. So, like, we went down there, and we weren't getting any word, and I started getting worried, and then finally, um, they had, like, a phone downstairs that, like, the, you can call your family, and the families can call you. So, she called me. And she was like, hey, I want to see you. So I went upstairs. And she was like, yeah, they're going to start, well, yeah, they're going to start Pictosin here soon. Um, they already got my IV in and everything. And it was dripping, like, already. So she was going to be getting it here soon. She was like, we're going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. And they didn't want to know the gender of the baby. So I was like, all right, yeah, we're having a baby. And, like, you talk to her. And she was really excited. And she was in pain. And she decided that she was going to do it naturally, which was, I was very proud of her because my sister is like, if you sneeze, she needs to go to the doctor. Like, she's a hypochondriac, really bad. But she was like, no, I'm going to do a natural. She had, like, a birth plan that she was like, I'm sticking to my birth plan. So, I don't know, it was like a while, and we weren't hearing anything. And, um just they had her on the pictosin and then it was probably one o'clock in the morning we were all downstairs and I didn't sleep and I had been up at this point since 
6.30 in the morning. So, I was really tired, but I couldn't sleep. I probably only slept for like 20 minutes. So, um, yeah. So, I was sleeping or whatever, and, uh, my mom came down, she was like, um, we don't know how long it's gonna be, she was like, they started her off at the lowest dose of pectosin, and now she's up to the highest dose, and she was only like, three centimeters, and I was like, okay, because you have to be ten, so, I mean, I guess three is like the slice of a banana, which is like that big, and then, Oh, and I ate a bagel last night. Gross. Anyhow, and then the size that you need to be 10 is the size of a bagel, which is like that. Can we can we get a comparison? You go from being that to that. That's that's big. <laughs> so she was only at three centimeters, and my mom came back downstairs at like five and was like, "Guys, you might as well go home." Um, she she's still three, and so we were like, "All right, we'll go home." So, they were trying to break her water, like, they wanted to break the water, like, to progress the labor. My sister was like, no, you're not breaking my water, I'm letting it go naturally. And so, they were like, alright. So, we came home, and it was, like, I didn't even go to bed till 6 in the morning. And so, um, I didn't even sleep. I slept for, like, probably an hour. And I got a text from my mom saying that. I have my phone. It was, I think, six. Okay. Water broke. And that was at 6.49 a.m. And that was literally, like, almost an hour. And then at 7.53, three minutes apart, doing big with big contractions. So I was like okay, should we come? And was, like, freaking out. And she was like, no, not yet. I'll let you know. And I was like, well, the way you're making the sound is, like, the baby's gonna be here. So, I was, like, call my aunt, call my aunt, call my aunt, because I don't have my driver's license yet. And I was like, Holly, I need you to come and get me. Because we had been at the hospital before. And she was like, why, why, why? And I was like, you didn't check your phone? Like, Joy's ready to go. And we are thought, like, oh, she's ready to push. No. So, after a big fight between me and my boyfriend, which isn't very important, anyhow, I was like, alright, we're going. So, my aunt came and got me, and we left. So, my mom was like, I'll let you know when she starts to push. And I was like, oh my god, like, we need to get there. Um, and I was like, so, so like worrying so finally like we got there and we like couldn't hear anything for hours and I mean like hours so we were there at like nine o'clock in the morning and we didn't hear anything until mm, I want to say like 2.30 yeah probably like 2.30 and we got news that the baby's heartbeat, he has a very bad heart murmur. Well, the baby had a heart murmur. Very bad. Um, it would go beep, 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 stop. Beep, beep, beep. And then it would go like that. And so they were really worried and they were like, Joy, like, we, we don't know what to do. And so they talked to her and, um, my mom came down, she was running, and we were like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, like, she had a baby, and they're at this hospital, they play, like, the ding, 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 whatever, like, that lullaby, like, whatever baby's born, and we kept hearing it, we heard it, like, twice, and we were like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, because we called the baby Sprout, because we didn't know what it was, so we were like, oh, it's Sprout, and we were like, oh, it's Sprout. And it was like 2.30 and my mom comes around and she was like, that's not us. And she was like, um, Sprout's heart murmur is really bad. So my sister wanted to go naturally and they pretty much gave her the option. Either you're going to get an epidural and try to relax all your muscles because the baby was positioned wrong. So, I mean, it was, I mean, all on her left side. I'm not wearing a bra. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I just woke up. So, whatever. Well, I woke up like an hour, almost two hours ago, whatever. Anyhow, 
but um, it was all on her left side. Like you could see like the outline of the baby, and uh, she was in pain. But I mean, like to this point, she didn't ask for anything. Like she was pleasant and was like making jokes and stuff didn't want anything and so they were pretty much like joy either you need to get an epidural or you're gonna have an emergency c-section and so my mom was like look you need to get the epidural because my mom had one with me and she was like it's really not that bad so joy got the epidural and probably five minutes after she got it put in um my mom texted me and i just plugged my phone in and i was like Somebody stupid text me, and I don't want to see what they have to say, but I'll do it anyhow. And it said, Joy wants to see you. So I, like, threw on my shoes and went running. So I ran upstairs and went in, and she was, oh, my God, like, on her side. And they had such gentle music going, and this was at, I think, like, 4.30. Because we had to wait a while, because, um, they had to, like, get the IV, like, the epidural in her back and everything, and... Um, wait for it to kick in a little bit, and I was up there probably five minutes, and I was talking to her, and I was like, Joy, I'm so proud of you, like, you're doing great, and finally, she's like, I feel like I have to push, and it was four o'clock, and we were like, oh my god, okay, so my brother-in-law, Adam, goes running down the hallway, and is like, she's ready to push, she's ready to push, so we were like, okay, yeah, we know we have to go, so we ran back downstairs, um, I told my mom, because my mom was going to be in the delivery room with Joy. And so I was like, Mom, Joy said she has to push. And my mom was like, oh, I'm going. So she went upstairs. And at this point, Joy was 9 centimeters, and her cervix had a little lip on it. So she felt like she could push. So at, so they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can try and push a little bit. So she tried to push, and that little lip kept getting caught. So her midwife would put her finger and push the lip down on her cervix and the baby would slide out and they could see the top of the head and he the like as soon as she would let the fi like her finger go um it would catch on the lip and then would go back in so it was essentially like I'm emerging I'm stuck I'm going back in and so I mean we were downstairs and we were beat and, I mean, like, at this point, I hadn't slept. And I was so tired. Okay. At 4.08, my sister wanted to see me. At 4.30, super good news. Baby moved and she's dilated to 9. Totally effaced. Pushing in an hour. She has to try to move the baby one more time. So they set her on her left side to try and move the baby to like be in the birth position like its head was down and everything so they were like oh yeah 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 like it's awesome um so like 10 minutes later my brother-in-law's parents showed up and I was like hey they're here never got a text so my mom's like hey Joy's pushing and it was like six o'clock we were like oh okay yeah or no it wasn't even six I think it was 4 30 yeah it was 4 30 and um, my brother-in-law came down and he's like, well, Joy was pushing and she's tired, so she's going to take a little bit of a break. And, I mean, at this point, um, Joy couldn't move without assistance. And, I mean, like, even rotating her body, she had to have two nurses come in and help her because she was so exhausted. So, I mean, and you really don't think that, like, it's that big of a deal, but trust me, it really is. Like... It's a big deal. So, we were all like, okay. The nurses were like, yeah, you're going to have a baby by 7. We were like, finally. Like, we get to go home. So, I mean, we weren't being rude about it. I mean, like, we wanted to see the baby. So, pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. We don't hear from anybody. 12.30 comes around. Finally, I text my mom. I'm like, is there a baby yet? nothing. So at 102, I texted my mom and I said, please tell me what's going on. I'm concerned. And as soon as I sent it, my mom came running down the hallway and said, we have a baby. And she was bawling. And I couldn't tell if they're happy tears or not. So, um, 
I was like, yay, my baby, and, like, we were all excited, and, like, woke up, like, the entire, like, waiting room, which consisted of, like, some guys sleeping down there with this kid, and it was, like, not even a whole bunch of people, it was just mainly us, and, um, we were so excited, and then we found out that, um, it was a boy, his name's Isaac, um, but he had to go to the NICU, um, he was nine pounds, one ounce, and essentially what happened was he was so big, his head was so big that, um, my sister, it's our family curse, um, pretty much that chat, like, I'm not going to say her last name. Oops. Anyhow, our family, um, the women have a really hard time carrying boys because we all have, I don't, I don't know what it is about my family, but we all have a tilted pelvic bone and boys tend to be bigger. So, um, 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 my mom had a miscarriage when she was pregnant with boys and then so did my grandmother. So, it was a boy, and we were like, that's why the delivery was so rough. Literally, there were 25 people in the room with my sister. They had people above her pushing on her belly. My mom thought that they were giving her CPR, but they were pushing the baby out. My sister had lost a lot of blood, and they she had a significant tear, um that they're still not sure if she's going to be able to carry children or not now because the tear was so big and as soon as the baby came out he was blue he didn't cry and he was huge i yeah he he was huge um and my sister was like two weeks early and he was nine pounds one ounce and it was so weird my sister had a doctor's appointment last week he was four pounds she has him, and he's nine pounds one ounce. That's five pounds in a week. That's a lot. So, um, they took him. My sister only saw his hand and was like rubbing him, trying to like stimulate him to cry. He cried twice, and then my brother-in-law got to walk over. He looked down in the bassinet, and Isaac opened up his eyes and looked directly into Adam's and was like staring him in the eyes and then Adam kissed him on the forehead and they wheeled him off to the NICU which is the neonatal intensive care unit so he was down there and we had no updates so my mom went back up to the room came back down and was like um yeah you guys might as well go home um Joy's not going to be able to be seen for possibly another hour and at this point it was like two o'clock so they had been sewing her for an hour so she was like, You guys might as well go home. You're not gonna be able to see the baby tonight. Um Joy and Adam aren't even gonna be able to see the baby for another hour. So my boyfriend was like he he was talking to me, he was like, Look, you've been up since six thirty Friday morning. You need to go home and go to bed. So it was like two or five and I like we walked out of the hospital and I just broke down. Like I was bawling mess. So I had no idea what was going on. So this morning at like eight, I got a call from my sister. She was like, Hey, what's going on? Like, oh nonchalant. I was like, uh, nothing you gotta tell me. And he has nine pounds, one ounce, and she she's in pain today, but um he had to have a blood transfusion last night because he was so pale. They just didn't know. Um, and they also had to use not a vacuum, but a, like a suction cup to help his head pass. Um, so right now he has a significant hole in his heart, which a lot of babies do. So, um, they have to wait 48 hours to see if it'll patch up. But he was born at one o'clock on the dot, 1 a.m. Anyhow, um, he has a significant hole in his heart that is either going to patch itself up or he's going to have to have surgery. And on the back of his head, um, they don't know right now if it's a bruise or if it's internal bleeding. So he's going to have a lot of tests done today. So um, pretty much today, it's just grandparents and parents allowed, which I'm the aunt. But tomorrow, I'll be able to go see him. So I'm not going to school because my nephew is more important than my education. Just kidding. But, really, I didn't want to go see him. But, I will admit that I was like, I need to see a picture of my nephew. So, here he is. Nine pounds, one ounce. This is Isaac, guys. Oops, wrong way. Yep. 
isn't he beautiful? I just freaking cried when I saw that. I was like, I love him. Okay, this is a 20 minute video, but yeah. Bye guys.